I would like to congratulate the anniversary birth of Imam Sahib al Asr al Zaman on Friday, 15 Shaban, exactly 255 after the immigration of Prophet Muhammad to Medina through the progeny of Ali ibn Abi Talib Ali alayhi salatu was salam by his father Imam Hassan al-Askari. As the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, made a journey, a sail journey, which is known as a marriage. Marriage actualizing the Ismul Alat min Bab al Mehtah, Maraj, Uruj, Araja Yaruju, Urujan, Urujun El Allah. Urujun el Allah associated with Sayrus Rukun el Allah. Why he made a Ma'raj? What was the cause of the Ma'raj? Because the cause of the Ma'raj was Sayrus Rukun el Allah. The cause of the Ma'raj is already pre assessed, it's already been declared by Sayrus Rukun el Allah in the cave of. Then, exactly, that Cyrus Rukun El Allah, symbolizing the appearance of Imam Sahib Al Asr Al Zaman. How? Because he has got major occultation and minor occultation. At the moment, at the moment, he is. His occultation ceased to exist as a major. And why? How is assessed? How are you going to compare analogy these two things? The firstly, Prophet Muhammad was marriage was caused by Sayyidu Sulukun and Allah in the cave of Pharaoh. Allah once find out his heart is ready. The Prophet Muhammad's heart is ready. Then make him prophet. What's heart? Kalb al Salim. Kalb al Mutma'inna. Because his first period of life was he was a shepherd. His second period of life is a tradesman, merchandising. From Medina to Sir, his last period is to serve Allah and to serve humanity. Transfer from inside of the box to the outside of the box. So, Firstly, Sayyid Rasulullah Allah. Then, when it comes to Imam Mahdi, Sahib al-Asr wa zaman how? He's already, he's already in Sayyid Rasulullah Allah. His heart already declared that there's one thing is missing. There is one contradiction and antagonism. What's contradiction? Contradiction is the 99% of ulama. Ijma'ul ulama. Muttafiqul qawl. Fi hazihil qawl. That Imam Sahib al Asr was meant to be arrived here, meant to be coming here. Because why? Because of the current situation we live on, class as a Qiyamatul Suhra. The current states of Muslim and the world is Qiyamatul Suhra. We've got two Qiyamat, Qiyamatul Suhra and Qiyamatul Kubra. All the signs, all the signs of Qiyamatul Suhra already cease to exist. He meant to be here. He's already declared. His heart already been authorized and approved by Allah. But only one thing is missing. There's a hijab, there's a veil. 
is the shade, is the hijab, is the veil, is the shade, is the sin. Our livelihood, the way we acting, the way we behaving, is stopping us. Is stopping us of his appearance. That's why we're not a good soldier. We mean to be a good soldier. We have to prepare ourselves, learn how to be a good soldier. See the Prophet Muhammad, by his side, look at Allah, go to Maharaj. As he went travel to Maharaj, Asra, Subhanallah, Asra, by Abdi Hilayla, Min al Masjid al Haram, Al al Masjid al Aqsa, Lazi Barakna, Hawla, Huli Nuriya, Humin Ayatna. What's Ayatna mean? I show it the first heaven. He showed the first heaven. Some people think that. that We've got seven heavens, seven heavens plus the protection, which is protecting life and the earth. Traps, permits, and this sort of thing, which are above us. No, the first heaven, whatever, whatever galaxies so far, whatever galaxies so far, the Hubble telescope discovered is close to the one heaven. Even our closest, our closest galaxy Mercury, you are, we are in the state of Mercury now, in the galaxy of Mercury. Which is the closest one is million of years light to travel in the Earth. But beyond that, beyond losing things, close to the one heaven. The one heaven what? The heaven, the first heaven was, was named, was glorified, honored by Prophet Adam. The second heaven is occupied, which yet the human technology can't discover the second heaven. Just that they are even struggling in the first heaven. The second heaven is occupied by Isa and Yahya. Because Isa and Yahya, in terms of chronological order, was closed at the time of Prophet Muhammad. After Prophet Isa and Yahya, there wasn't any Prophet, only Prophet Muhammad. Yakmil al Iman al Insan. Mazhar al-Iman wal-Kamal wal-Din And the third heaven The third heaven was glorified, honored by Prophet Yusuf The same thing, the, the fourth heaven was Prophet Idris The first heaven, Prophet Harun The sixth heaven, Prophet Musa And the last heaven, the seventh heaven was Prophet Ibrahim you know, Prophet Ibrahim is already in Nehri with Bayt al-Ma'amur. Bayt al-Ma'amur. Bayt al-Ma'amur is already based. It's daily in a seven heaven called Bayt al Why? Why Allah honored him Bayt al-Ma'amur? Because he made the house of Allah. He made Bayt al-Haram. Because everyone will receive their jaza, their reward in the Qiyamah according to their, in association with their deeds. Whatever deeds you're committing, you're managing, you're substantial, you're throwing forward, the same deeds, the same deeds, Allah will give you a jaza. The same association. See, see the parallel, see the correlation, it has got your deeds. Definitely has got a correlation relationship. If you cry for Imam Hussein, if you, if you, if you sort of come in here, in this such a luminous day, Associate yourself with Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman, understand his position, you're more likely, you're more likely being Nehbari alongside of Imam Sahib al Asri wa Zaman wa Ayyimma. Everyone may receive their Jazan according to their deeds, whatever they have to obtain with their mind. That's what the meaning of intercession means, Shafa'at means. Shafa'at is not one thing, it's many things, producing one thing. So what's happening? Bayt al Mahmur. One thing about Bayt al Mahmur. Every day 70,000 of angels rising to Bayt al Mahmur, never coming back. Every day 70,000 of Bayt al Mahmur. So as Prophet Muhammad, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this journey from seven heaven to last heaven, Siddhatul Mantha, the last position. Siddhatul Mantha is the highest. After that, he can't reach in the position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He smelled a beautiful fragrance. Ask Jibrail, what is this fragrance? Such a beautiful fragrance. Jibrail said, this is the fragrance of whom? Who combed the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh? She just was a slave of Pharaoh. Combing the hair of the daughter of Pharaoh. So the comb fell in the ground. And as soon as she picked up the comb, said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
She used to live in the near town of Perth, BC. Look at her knowledge. Look at her marifat. Look at her cognition and understanding. It's all about marifat. It's not about how many books you write, how many lecturing you do, how many majorities you attain. It's about marifat and the com contemplation, understanding, realizing. It's about how much Islam goes into your flesh, into your bone. It's about the core plan because behind this heart is another heart, another heart. It's about the vision of heart. She fell to Allah in the vision of heart, in the core plan of heart. She said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And the daughter of Pharaoh said, Surely you mean my father, Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh used to say, Anaratukum al-Allah, I'm your Lord. And he made lots of effort, he spent lots of money. And his adherent, and his adherent to and his supporter to make sure the people class him as a god said قال يا ايها الملؤ ما علمت لكم من اله غيري did i teach you anything besides me no what you are teach about me i said to you i am allah no one else so what she says it the islamic father says yeah go ahead tell your father and she said our lord our god our allah is your you are, is your Allah, is my Allah and your dad is Allah, Allah, Rabbi Jalla Jalala, not your father. So she said to her, Father, what's Pharaoh's action? Pharaoh, what's he done? He put on fire. He put on fire each of her children in a cauldron fire. Because she had many children. One by one, the Pharaoh put her children in a cauldron of fire burned alively in front of her eyes. That means come to Allah's baby. Means come to Allah's infant baby. That baby suckling her bosom. She couldn't bear it. She couldn't stand. She couldn't stand the situation. And the baby by that time talked to speak. In the Islamic history, there's a four baby talk. This baby, and the witness of Yusuf, and the Isa, and the Juraj. Juraj, who's, who people accuse in the Juraj of illegitimate baby, illegitimate baby. But the baby talked, no, I'm blind to shepherd, not Juraj. This four baby is speaking. But what this baby said, this baby talked to his mom or mother. Throw yourself, throw yourself in a cauldron pot, throw yourself into fire. And you know the punishment of this world is nothing. The suffering of this world is nothing compared to the punishment of the hereafter. That's the reality of Islam. That's the pleasure of Islam. That the mass and person must suffer. Face tribulation and calamity and let it go and divide just because of Islam, the pleasure of Islam. Look at her fragrance. But so when it comes to our time, when it comes to our situation, what we're gonna do, what's the action? If we don't get if we don't get what you are wanted, because it's sinful, you are angry towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If our children didn't, didn't go to the right school, or we didn't get enough food, or we didn't get a professional job, or we would not get as we want them to get, we get angry, resentful, giving up. But the true believer, despite all calamity, said this is from Allah. Even he mistake, even a moment he make a mistake, because more likely every person should make a mistake. But the worst mistake is when you carry on with your mistake, when you live on with your mistake, the memory of mistake haunting you. The memory of mistake affecting your future. As the most philosophers believe now, don't look in the past. Forget the past, look in the future. Because if you look to the past, the past may be blocked, may cause you to hurt your memory mentally is affecting you. But even in the current states, we are not we are not in a position in that level. 
That's why Imam Mahdi is not coming, because we are not a good soldier. We have to strive in the way of Allah as an individual. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُ فِينَا لَنَحْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Every single individual have to make effort in the way of Allah. Have to make effort. That's why we're not making an effort because we've got too much dependence, too much trusting, too much destruction of our children, of our family, of our job, distracting us, disturbing us to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone wants to be a good Muslim. Everyone is aiming high. Everyone wants to annihilate fanaun fillah. Annihilate in the way of Allah. But they can't. As Imam Sajjad alayhi salatu wa salam, he was six hours he prostrating in a position of sujood. Circulating the whole movement of salat. Turn the whole of his body into worms. That's what once we find this position, then we will be classed as a good Muslim. First we have to pay maqsad on Allah, aim in high. في سبيل الله فناء في الله بقاء بالله. Once we فناء في الله reach that position, obtain that position, we will enjoy. We will enjoy the بقاء بالله. We will enjoy the immortality of hereafter. As the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says, لا يكمل إيمان أحدكم. حتى يحتمي على مئة وثلاث خصال. As the Iman has got ten level, as the Prophet Muhammad Salman said, Iman has got ten level. But within ten level, you have to maintain. You mean to have hundred three character. You mean to be hundred three personage, personality. And that's what I mean. Let's first start our topic. Back to our topic. We compare the analogy of the time of Sahib al-Azir al-Zaman with the Ma'raj of Prophet Muhammad. Because you said that time is ready as most Mujtahid is arguing. And belief it is the right time for Imam Sahib al-Azir al-Zaman to arrive. But our sin is availing. Our sin is stopping us. Our sin is stopping us to reach to understand him. To enjoy his time. But the Prophet Muhammad's marriage. But the Prophet, what's happening in the Prophet's marriage? He goes to marriage. Was everything ready? He made a sayyid suluk in Allah wa ta'ala. Because his heart was ready. Qalbul salim. Qalbul mutma'inna. Salawat. So firstly, let's conclude. First, if we want to know. If you want to know who is Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman is to prepare ourselves for his arrival. Prepare ourselves. How? By striving, working hard, functioning well as a good Muslim. Within functioning, asking Allah. Put our petition and our situation to Allah, say, Oh Allah, haste and the arrival of Sahib al Asr al Zaman. And the second things we say, we're not a good Muslim. We need to be prepare ourselves for the arrival of Sahib al Asr. Why not? We can't do it because of too much destruction. Too much dependent. We've got too much dependent. We love so much of our family, our children. If our children get illness, we're diagnosed. We can't even pray because it's too much love, too much dependence is stopping us. You're not meant to be in that situation. Once you feel dependent, know the boat is already in a boat. You know your boat is already meant to crack. And you're in the state, in a worse situation. The once the water goes into boat, and that boat will crack and you will sink. Make sure you know it and be aware how to manage the weight of this world. Because this world is too weighty, that's why you're not meant to be a good Muslim. How to manage, how to swipe in this weight of the world. How to let it go with too much responsibilities and suffering, all difficulties. Salawat. Now we ask.
از الله سبحانه و تعالی تحیست ان دعرای و ارتمام صاحب العصر و زمان ان مکس ان سپسفیک ان چوزین ان چوزن اف هز سولجر ان از کن الله سبحانه و تعالی اللهم اجعل من جندک فا این جندک هم الغالبون و اجعل من حزبک فا این حزبک هم المفلقون و اجعل من اولیائک فا این اولیائک لا خوف علیهم ولا هم یحزنون صلوات Oh, oh, oh.